Hello and welcome to the cake tip. Today we're going to be making alpha draw cookies. These are sandwich cookies and we're going to fill them with a sugar-free chocolate spread. Now these cookies are actually grain free so they're ideal for keto as well as gluten free at the same time. We are going to be replacing our sugar with stevia. The ingredients you're going to need to make these sandwich cookies is walnuts, coconut flour, baking powder which is gluten free, stevia, very soft butter but not liquid form and one egg white and a little bit of vanilla extract. This really is a super simple recipe because you're going to pop the walnuts, coconut flour, baking powder, stevia all into a food processor until it becomes almost like a flour. Once you've got it to that stage you're then going to pop your butter, vanilla extract and your egg white into there so it forms a dough. Then we're going to roll that up and leave that in the fridge for at least two to three hours so it's firm enough to be able to cut. Okay, let's get started. I'm grabbing myself my uh, Thermomix that I'm using to do my, but any food processor is absolutely fine to make these. So I've got 150 grams of walnuts, which I'm going to pop in first. Then I have two teaspoons of stevia, and this is equivalent to the amount of sugar that would normally be in these sandwich cookies. 50 grams of coconut flour. And we need just a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, remembering gluten free. Now we just need to process it. Okay, once you've processed your walnuts with your coconut flour and other ingredients, it should look like this. They're like a slightly dampened flour. If it's like that, we're ready to put the rest of our ingredients with it and process again. We should start by separating our egg because we only need the egg white for this recipe. And one of the easiest ways to keep just the egg yolk in one place is to try and break your egg in the centre and then literally just swap it from one to another. And very quickly just get your egg white that way. You can do it through your fingers if you find that easier. A lot of people have different techniques. And then just pop your egg yolk into another bowl ready to use for something else. So we'll pop our egg white egg yolk to the side and now we're going to pop our egg whites into the flour base. Just make sure you've got all of it. Next we're going to pop in our butter that needs to be soft but not liquid. followed by one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Make sure it's extract, um, just so that you're gonna get enough vanilla flavoring in there. Okay, you just pop that into the bowl, just measure it out. This is quite thick because I'm using a concentrated one. But any type of vanilla extract is fine. Okay, now you've got all of your ingredients in your bowl, you're just going to process it for a couple of seconds until it's combined and makes a dough. If it doesn't happen in a couple of seconds, just keep going until it's just come to a dough. Once your doughs come together, it should look just like this. So it just looks like a normal cookie dough. Now you need to grab yourself a bit of parchment paper or greaseproof baking paper and you're going to pop your dough straight onto the paper. Once you have all of your dough on your greaseproof paper, you're literally just going to roll it up to begin with. You're going to try and make like a sausage. Seems a bit tricky to begin with, but once it starts rolling, then it's so much easier.
as you're going along, just try and even up the edges and then just keep going. Eventually, you will be able to roll it into a sausage. You want it roughly about 20 centimetres long so that it'll be the right thickness for when we come to cutting it later on. We're going to continue rolling this. We're nearly there. It's nearly at the shape we want it to be. I'm just going to do it a little bit more. So we're just rolling it completely now. So we roll it round like this. I'm just trying to get a really circular shape. When you're happy with the shape of it, we're then going to actually wrap it in this and store it in the fridge for two to three hours until it's firm enough to be able to cut into cookies. So just roll it back to the very end, like so. Roll it round once, fold your edges in, just so that it's sealed. Now our cookies have been sitting in the fridge for at least two hours. They're nice and firm, which means they're going to be so much easier to cut. So we're going to unroll them and we're going to be placing them on a baking tin with parchment paper or baking paper on them. Now you're going to be cutting these cookies to approximately half a centimetre thick or um, six mil. This also need to preheat your oven to 180 degrees fan. You'll also need to make sure that you have your racks on a high, a high point in your oven and a low point in your oven because you're actually going to change halfway through. Start off on the top and then put to the bottom. Okay, let's begin to cut our cookies. I'm just cutting this one at the end off because it's obviously a little bit wrinkled and then we want approximately half a centimetre. The knife that you use needs to be nice and sharp. You will need to place these with at least two centimetres between them when you're baking them. Continue to cut all of your cookies until you've used all of your dough up and you've filled your trays. Once you've cut all your cookies, and they are all sitting on your tray lovely and ready to go in the oven. You're going to pop them in the top of the oven for five minutes. After five minutes, you're going to transfer them to the bottom of the oven and turn them when you put them on the bottom of the oven. This is just so that you can create an equal bake all over. Remove your sandwich cookies from the oven. They're smelling amazing. And allow them to cool completely on a wire rack. This is so that they are allowed to firm up because they'll actually be quite soft when they first come out the oven. When your biscuits, cookies have completely cooled, you're then going to sandwich them together with um, sugar-free, gluten-free chocolate spread. Now you can make your own at home if you choose to or you can use the store-bought stuff. You're just going to place it into a piping bag cut the very end off and then you're just going to pipe it into the centre. Because these are quite delicate sandwich cookies, you can't just spread it off because they will break. But it is so worth it because they are so buttery and lovely. Okay, let's just snip the end off. Just about that. You don't want any more than that. Just so that you can control it. Squeeze all of your chocolate spread down to the end. Grab yourself a cookie. And you're just going to pipe from the outside, circular, until you end up in the middle. Lovely and easy. Pop your piping bag down for a second. Grab yourself another cookie and sandwich them together. How lovely do they look? Pop them on your plate and then you're just going to continue this process until you've used up all of your cookies. It makes me want to eat them just watching doing this. <laughs> Sandwich them together and carry on.
finished all my cookies and I'm going to try and get one of these before my little cookie monsters come home from school. I want to devour all of them and I won't get a chance to make them. Even though I've made them, I won't get a chance to eat them. These gorgeous cookies do actually only last about a day once they've been piped. If you want to make these and keep them, the best thing to do is make your mix and roll it up into the like sausage shape and then pop it in the freezer for up to three months. Then you know that you can just cut it into its slices, pop it in the oven and pipe it ready for when you may have guests or friends over. Great. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to go off and make these and make sure you get one before anyone else does. Please remember to subscribe for all future videos, for recipes and demonstrations on how to make keto, paleo, gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan and other things.